Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you all are fine at your home. We are learning class 9 science biology. Till now we had completed uh, two chapters in biology dear students that is chapter number 5 the fundamental unit of life and chapter number 6 tissues. And in our previous video, we are dealing with the or we are learning with the chapter number 40 natural resources. But now as the CBSE has given the revised syllabus. So as for the revised syllabus of CBSE, now there are only three chapters in biology. Chapter number five, the fundamental unit of life. Chapter number six, tissues. And chapter number 13, why do we fall ill? Now the chapter which we were learning in previously, chapter number 14, that chapter is also included into the syllabus, but that chapter will not come into your final examination. That chapter is only for the internal assessment. So we pray, dear students, that school will reopen soon. So when school reopens, at that time, we will complete that chapter. So we will hold on this chapter till water cycle which I had given to you uh, in last video and now whatever the remaining part of that chapter that we will complete after the school reopens and today now we are going with the solution of the question bank the question bank which is already with you in the form of pdf the question bank which is given to you for the pre midterm examination and we have both the chapters chapter number five and chapter number six into that so we are going with the solution of the question bank now So let's begin with that question bank. In our question bank, the first uh, section is of multiple choice question, right? So we will go with that multiple choice questions. And the first question we have that who discovered the nucleus of the cell? The question is who discovered the nucleus of the cell? So here we have to think about the question that the question is asking about the nucleus, right? So if we go from the uh, down here, four options we have Robert Brown, Robert Wu, Parkinia and Luan Hock. If we go with that down, that what about the Luan Hock? That Luan Hock was the scientist who had firstly discovered the free living organisms. So a Leuven Hawk is not the answer of this question. Then what about the Purkinje? Purkinje is the scientist who had given the term protoplasm. So that was also not that is also not the answer of this question. Then the next is Robert Hooke. Dear students, please remember. Robert Hooke is the scientist who firstly gave the term cell, who had firstly uh, find out the small tiny rooms inside the cork of the bark of the tree and then he gave that small rooms the term cell and the last option remaining that is Robert Brown. So this is our correct answer that Robert Brown first discovered the nucleus of the cell. Okay, moving to the next question now, who gave the term protoplasm? Might be still many students are confusing with that term protoplasm and cytoplasm. So I'm again going to clear you both the terms cytoplasm and protoplasm dear students. Cytoplasm is the liquid which is present into, uh, into the cell surrounding nucleus. Cytoplasm is the liquid which is present into the cell surrounding nucleus where all the different organisms are organelles are present that is mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum all that organisms are present into the cytoplasm but what is protoplasm? Protoplasm is the combination of cytoplasm plus nucleus getting dear students that whole nucleus and cytoplasm is called as a protoplasm. So here our question is who gave the term protoplasm and the correct answer of this question is Parkinje. Parkinje has first given the term protoplasm. Okay moving to the next question now who discovered living cells under the microscope first time that we had discussed in first question only here the question is about the living cells living cells means the cells are already alive and we can see that cells under the microscope but who had first time discovered that microscope uh, in uh, under the microscope free living cells so the correct answer of this question is one Hawk, that Leuven Hawk had firstly discovered 
called living cells under the microscope. So I hope dear students, these three questions with the answer is now clear to you. Okay, so let's move with that. Uh, our next question, that is question number four. Which of the following cells do not have fixed shape? Okay, dear students, here the question is do not have fixed shape. So here first we have to be very much clear that why some organisms have fixed shape uh, because due to their, uh, sorry, sorry, here the question is about the cells. That why some cells have fixed shape due to their function. Some of the cells have to do a particular function and that is why the shape of that cell is necessarily requiredly to be fixed but the question is over here do not have fixed shape so we'll go with the four options over here that is nerve cells red blood cells white blood cells and amoeba if we talk about the nerve cells that nerve, nerve cells has the very important function to carry out information from brain to different parts of the body that is why it should be required that it should have fixed shape second is red blood cell of course red blood cells also have very peculiar functions that is why the shape of red blood cells is also a fixed shape white blood cells different types of white blood cells are present in our body but that uh, shape of white blood cells also is fixed. Now remaining what amoeba and that we all know that amoeba is the organism which, uh, which can change their shape. So here the answer of our question is amoeba is the organism which has its fixed shape. Moving with the next question. Who gave cell theory that all organisms are made with the cell? Okay, dear students, here the term cell theory comes. So first you should know what is cell theory. Cell theory stated that all the organisms, organisms means either they are plants or they are the animals, all that organisms are made up with the cell. This statement is called a cell theory. The question over here that who gave cell theory? So the answer is, Sheridan and Swan. Of course, because Perkinje has had given the term protoplasm. Robert Hooke was the scientist who first discovered the cell. Leon Hooke is the scientist who had first discovered three living organisms under the microscope. So now remaining what Sheridan and Swan. Sheridan is the botanist and Swan is the zoologist. Botanists uh, are told to such persons which have a master knowledge about the uh, plants and Swan. Is the zoologist. Zoologists are the persons which have a master knowledge about the animals. So remember dear students, Shiden and Swan, uh, these both botanists and zoologists, the scientists had given cell theory and what is cell theory? That all organisms, either they are plants or animals, they are made up with the cell. With the next, moving with the next question that which of the following is multicellular organisms? Okay, so here we should have to clear with the multi. Multi means many and cellular means cell. So the organisms which have more number of cells present in, in it, they are called as multicellular organisms. So two terms we know that unicellular and multicellular. So here if we talk about the plants, plants have number of cells in present in it. So plant is is a multicellular organisms correct going with the uh, another options amoeba no amoeba is made up of the single cell only so it is not included in the multicellular organism paramecium paramecium has also one cell present in it so it is also not a multicellular organism bacteria bacteria are also made up with one cell so bacteria is also not a multicellular organism so what is the answer of our question that is plants that plants is multicellular organism from this these are the options okay. so here this is the image which gives the idea about the unicellular and multicellular organisms dear student this is a revision of unicellular and multicellular that uni means one and cellular means cell that the organisms which have only one cell present in it they are called as unicellular organism for example amoeba chlamydomonas paramecium and bacteria and as we had discussed now that multi means more and cellular means cell they are fungi plants and animals Okay, 
uh, students we are moving with our next question that is which of the following is prokaryote so here the first uh, first clear the term prokaryote what do you mean by prokaryote that is the two terms are known to you eukaryote and prokaryote so prokaryote are the organisms which do not have well defined nucleus means that uh, the nucleus do, do not have the nuclear envelope and all that and that is why that the that nucleus of this organism is called as nucleoid and that is why they are called as prokaryote whereas the eukaryotic organisms have very well defined nucleus so here four options are given to us that is blue green uh, blue green algae plant cell animal cell and fungi so the first option blue green algae is the answer of our question dear student because plant cell animal cell and fungi these all three cells are the eukaryotic means these all three cells or these all three organisms have a very well defined nucleus okay moving with the next question which of the following organelle is absent in animal cell absent in animal cell that we have learned that so many organelles are present in plant cell also and so many organelles are present in animal cell also but the question over here that which organelle which is present in plant cell and absent in animal cell so let's see the options over here mitochondria the very first option mitochondria is powerhouse of the cell so definitely it is present in both plant cell and animal cell second is golgi body golgi body is also present in plant cell and animal cell as it is uh, in the working with the process of uh, synthesis of protein cell wall yes so this is the answer of our question that cell wall is only present in plant cell and absent in animal cell and the last option is vacuole vacuoles are the storage bags of the cell so vacuoles are present in both in plant cell also in animal cell also but the answer of our question is cell well that cell wall is the organelle which is absent in animal cell and present in plant cell moving with the next question which of the following organelle is called as a suicidal bag okay so first clear with the term suicidal bag why such organelle is called a suicidal bag because this is this is an organelle which digests its own cell and why it is called a suicidal bag already we had discussed in our videos and in notes also because Uh, this is the organelle which have some digestive juices and with the help of digestive juices it's also it also digests its own cell and that is uh, as it digests its own cell that is why it is called a suicidal bag okay so here four options are given to you that is mitochondria lysosomes ribosomes and vacuoles now only we had discussed that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell so it is not called a suicidal bag if we go with the ribosomes ribosomes are the factory of the proteins so it is also not called as a suicidal bag vacuoles are the storage bags of our body so remaining what lysosomes so please dear students remember that lysosome is the organelle which is called a suicidal bag so this is the answer of our question okay so uh, the question uh, previously we had seen about the prokaryotes and eukaryotes the, uh, this is the slide of this introductory part of the prokaryote and eukaryote as I, now i already told you that prokaryotes are the organisms which do not have well defined nucleus whereas eukaryotes have well defined nucleus so pro prokaryotes are like bacteria archaea then blue green algae they all are included into the prokaryotes whereas plants animals fungi they all are included into the eukaryotes okay the last question we had seen now that which organelle is uh, absent in animal cell so it is also one kind of uh, revision part to you dear students that in animal cell and plant cells which are the organelles which are present into the both cells and which are the organelles which are not present into the either in plant cell or in animal cell so first is cell wall that the answer we had discussed now that cell wall is present in plant cell but absent in animal cells vacuole 
cells are present in both plants and animals but in, instead of plant cell animal cells have the small vacuoles whereas the organelles which are present into both plant cell and animal cells they are mitochondria golgi rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum nucleus cytoplasm and ribosomes so this is one overview about the which are the organelles which are present into both plant cell and animal cells and yes dear students also remember that chloroplast is the organelle which is present only in plant cell and not present in animal cell so this is one kind of revision that which are the organelles are organelles are present in plant cells animal cells and which are the organelles are present in both plant cell and animal cells Okay, so uh, let's move with our next question. Question number 10. Water moves in and out of the cell by the process of. Okay, so here is the, our question is that, that process of what? By which process? Okay, that is the question. So here if the question is water moves, that yes, we all know that water uh, gets entered inside the cell uh, gets uh, exit outside of the cell yes so here the four options are given to you that is diffusion osmosis endocytosis and active transport diffusion is also the process uh, through which ions molecules can get enter uh, gets take entry and exit of the cell but diffusion is the process which used for all three states that is solid liquid and gases and osmosis is the process uh, which is only used for water that through osmosis water moves in and out of the cell through the, uh, with the help of concentration that water moves from higher concentration to lower concentration so answer of our question is osmosis moving with the next question in plants which of the following tissue has the capability of cell division okay when we were learning uh, chapter number uh, six tissues at that time we had learned in plants that Plants tissue is mo uh, mostly categorized uh, into two types of tissues. The first which have the uh, ability to divide and one which do not have ability to divide. So the ability to divide they are called as meristematic tissue. So of course over here parent options are given that is parenchyma, cholenchyma, xylem. These three are the tissues which comes into the permanent tissue means they lose their ability to divide. And the remaining is what apical meristem, which is the type of meristematic tissue. So the answer of this question is apical meristem. Moving with the next question, intercalary meristems are found in. Okay, the, uh, this is the type of one meristematic tissue. There are three types of meristematic tissue. Apical meristematic tissue, lateral meristematic tissue and intercalary meristematic tissue. So here the question is where the intercalary meristematic tissues are found. So here growing tips is one of the option in bark, internodes, internodes of leaves and teeth of stem. In tips, growing tips of either stem and root, that is the first option and last option, where you know, apical meristem will come. And our question is intercalary meristem. In bark, lateral meristem is present. So, what is remaining? Internodes of leaves. So, that is the answer, the correct answer of our question, that is internodes of leaves. Okay, in our previous question, we had seen that osmosis and diffusion. Might be this gives you the better idea about the osmosis and diffusion, dear students, that osmosis is the process in which water molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane means a membrane which allows some of the materials to pass uh, throughout. Okay, and diffusion, diffusion is also the process in which also molecules move from higher concentration to lower concentration, but diffusion does not need a semi-permeable membrane. And here the mostly is that osmosis is the process which only used for water molecules. So I hope you are clear with your answer. The second question we had seen about the, uh, sorry, the second third option we had seen about the endocytosis. That what is endocytosis? That is taking uh, the process of taking up food. For example, as we humans are taking up uh, food, that process is called as ingestion. 
so here also some of the organisms take the example of organism amoeba some of the organisms like amoeba how they are take that uh, they taking that food that they are creating pseudopodia and in the form of vacuole they are taking that food and this is called as food vacuole and that process of taking food by in the form of vacuole that process is called as endocytosis and as i told you that plant tissue is mainly categorized into two types of tissues that meristematic tissue which have the ability to divide meristematic tissue has the ability to divide means they can divide further three types of meristematic tissues are there apical meristematic tissue lateral meristematic tissue and intercalary meristematic tissue another type of plant tissue is permanent tissue they are called as permanent because they lose their ability to divide and that is why they are called as permanent tissue permanent tissue are also three types that is parenchyma collenchyma and parenchyma so clear students that uh, Did that answer of our question? The last question is that intercalary meristem. That intercalary meristem are present where? So intercalary meristem are present at the base of leaves, at the base of leaves and internodes. The base of leaves is also called as internodes. What do you mean by base of leaves? For example, the leaves starts from here. So this portion is called called as base of leaves or internodes. Clear to you? In figure or in image also you can easily see the intercalary meristem is present at the base. This is called as internode and this portion is also called as internode. So I hope all the answers are clear to you now, dear students.